Imagine for a moment that you and your family make your living from the land. As farmers, you work hard and bring in just enough to get by. Your life is not filled with frills, but it is, as far as you know, a good life. Now imagine that suddenly your home and farm have been taken away from you, or that you must cease practicing the religion you followed all of your life, or that war and famine are spreading all around you. If you were offered a chance at an entirely new life, would you take it? Would you choose to escape these conditions? 250 years ago, this was a real, not hypothetical choice presented to thousands of Europeans. And the chance for a new life, for a new start, was being offered in a strange new land called America. Like most in Germany, our farmhouse and barns are built in a village alongside other farming families. We farm the fields around our village. Several years of poor harvests and harsh winters have fallen upon us in our village. And the wars with France have laid waste to our lands. I am a Protestant, but now the government tells me I cannot be a Protestant any longer and live here. A man, an agent of a William Penn, tells us of a place in the New World known as Pennsylvania, where we might freely practice our religion. My family and I may soon go there. We Germans are not only farmers, but skilled craftsmen, too. Many of our fathers were French artisans who moved here to escape persecution from Louis XIV. <laughs> Odd to think you might have to leave this place, too. We are like many farmers here in this townland. We rent our farm. Now that does not necessarily mean we're poorer than the next here in Ireland, but we do struggle to make ends meet. The rents are high. Bad harvests and crop failures are quite common now too. And with the English restricting Irish trade, well, it's a hard time for everyone here in Ulster. When English rule dictated that their church, the Church of Ireland, remain in power, it meant most Ulster Scots like us were not even members of our own country's church. Because I'm a Presbyterian, my sons can never attend university or hold public office. We're used to selling our linens at market to make the rent payments. But now, English Parliament has enacted trade bans against Irish goods and produce. I am being forced to consider leaving my home just to make a good life for myself and my family. The spirit of emigrating here in Ulster seems to be confined to two circumstances. The Presbyterian religion and linen manufacture. Here at the forge, I repair tools and make cooking implements for about 10 surrounding townlands. Each townland has about 100 to 500 acres. Maybe 100 families live here. So many are starting to leave. What will become of my business? I am a yeoman, an independent farmer. I own this land and I have a fine house. When I was a boy, much of our civil war between the parliamentarians and the supporters of King Charles I was fought here in Worcestershire. 
Those years of political struggle and changes in rulers made many of us uneasy. As a servant here at the farm, I help with the dairying and the chores. My mother and father are laborers and cannot afford land of their own. What future do we have in England? We see no way out, aside from leaving. Sometimes at night, I dream about Virginia. It's hard to believe there's a place where man can have land free for the asking. My older brother will one day inherit this farm, but where does that leave a younger son like me? To be a soldier? A clergyman? Someday soon, I plan to go to Virginia and own my own farm, as my father owns this one. Against this backdrop of poor economic conditions, war, the yearning for religious freedom, and for land of one's own, these distinctly different peoples left Europe and came to the Valley of Virginia. The Valley of Virginia was the catalyst for the blending of three European peoples into one. And it was here, beginning as early as the 1730s, that a new American way of life began to blossom. To accurately depict the fascinating and diverse cultures that settled in the Valley of Virginia, authentic farm buildings from three countries in Europe and one American farm site were brought to the Museum of American Frontier Culture. Three of the farm sites represent those English, Scotch-Irish, and German farmers who made their way to America. The American farm shows the evolution and blending of these three European cultures and farming techniques into what became the American farm of the 1800s. The labeling, transportation, reassembly, and preservation of the buildings and artifacts took place over a 10-year period. During this process, many of the structures were saved from eventual demolition or decay. The German farm buildings came from the village of Hurt in Germany. They represent a typical small farm found in the Palatinate, the area of heaviest 18th century German immigration. Originally constructed in the 17th century, the house was one of the oldest surviving in Hurt. Worcestershire in the West Midlands of England was the original site of the English farm. The mid-17th century house and cattle shed represent the type of yeoman farm that many immigrants left behind in England. The Scotch-Irish farm buildings from County Tyrone in Northern Ireland consist of a house with a barn addition, a small piggery, and a four-room buyer or barn. From County Fermanagh, also in Northern Ireland, came the Ulster Forge, a single building used by a townland blacksmith. By the mid-1800s, these English, German, and Scotch-Irish immigrants had lived side by side in the valley for four or five generations, sharing traditions, customs, and knowledge. The result can be seen in the 19th century American farm buildings brought from Botetot County in the Valley of Virginia the largest farm on the museum grounds. It consists of a mid-19th century house, barn, and tobacco barn, along with numerous outbuildings. The 
farmhouse, built originally by a farmer of German descent, borrowed many elements from the Ulster house style. As the family grew and prospered, they added a separate kitchen to their house, with a servant's room above and a cellar below for storage. American farm wives tended kitchen gardens similar to those in England, full of beans, pumpkins, tomatoes, and cabbage. The principal barn drew heavily on German barn styles, two pens separated by a threshing floor. Many agricultural practices on the American farm have been brought to Virginia by immigrant forebears from Ulster and Worcestershire, where isolated farms were also common. Familiar European crops such as barley, rye, and oats were all grown here, but it was wheat that came to dominate the valley. Native American crops such as tobacco and corn also became important. Until well after the Civil War, farmers in the valley sowed seed by hand and harvested grain with a scythe. It was the shortage of labor, as much as anything, that fostered the mechanization of the American farm in the mid-19th century. With time, the English, Scotch-Irish, and Germans found the land of their own that they so desired. The religious freedom, the economic prosperity, and the political rights they were looking for. After inhabiting Virginia and the Carolinas, thousands upon thousands of these families moved west over the Appalachian Mountains and on into Kentucky, Tennessee, Ohio, Missouri, and Texas. And as they migrated, they spread the seeds of this new American way of life. What started here a long time ago as a hodgepodge of dissenting immigrants evolved into the America of today, a patchwork quilt of many influences and beliefs existing side by side. These diverse immigrants from Europe became the backbone of America. Jamestown may have been the site of the first European settlement in Virginia, but it was here that America took root, here in the Valley of Virginia.